Welcome one all, my name is Tavis as usual and today we are going to take care of the summoner also known as Thor and uh, this is going to be painted in a paint job inspired by the most famous and uh, not particularly famous summoner in the lore that of Aiden Pride why is it not particularly famous? Well, because his most memorable moment was fought in a borrowed Timberwolf. So yeah, now his parent unit, basically one of these boring ones that used camo as their paint scheme. And I mentioned before, I'm not the best at this. So what I'm doing is basically trying to apply some dirt spatter, which is a nice chocolatey brown, in large, chunks trying to spread them out a bit you know as one do to give the idea of like mottled camo now, i know they should be much smaller in order to properly function as camo but you know this is also a tabletop miniature so yeah basically the trick to do this is slowly and go on and be very wet colors. Decide to try and make interesting organic shapes. Take your time with this. There's no hurry. Just give them a slight cowy look. Now, once we're done with that, we hit it with some nice Crypt Wraith, which is a nice mossy green. And this is going to be our base green color because well that is what they use mostly basic base green color now why I picked Aiden Pierce okay, and Pierce Aiden Pride for this is of course because he's kind of a big deal in the lore he's this has this nice book series about his exploits as a an essentially failed warrior because, well, for all intents and purposes, he kind of washed out. He wasn't good enough. And uh, you then got to follow how he basically lies, sheets, and steel until he gets what he wants. Kind of fun story, actually. I recommend the read. And. Uh, as I said, by the end of his days in the cockpit of a, a uh, Timberwolf, he pretty much had the, the summoner as his his um, make of choice. And, of course, in the sphere, since they didn't know the proper names, gave it the designation Thor. Which I th think is partially because of the fact that it has a... Thunder and Lightning, which has a PPC and an auto cannon, but also think it's connected to the fact that it is sort of similar to the in the sphere Thunderbolt, both in looks and ornament. I mean, not very similar, but slightly similar. So I think there's a synergy there too. Now, it's one of these good at any range make. Like most clan mechs, designed to fight at any range. And yeah, now as you can see here, I got a bit sloppy at this point, and uh, my paint was started dry a bit, and it came a bit too dry. And well, dry paint does not go into cracks properly. So as you can see, I have to go over the same area several times. And that's one of these things where a wet palette is really good to have. And I have wet palette, but I didn't wet the paint properly. So that's one of these things you should do. Make sure you have proper paint wetting. It should be moist. Moist paint. Now, also, before anyone cries about it, I know I'm mistreating the brush, but this brush is dead anyway. It has split, and thus it's dead. So yeah. It's now one of my trash brushes. Now, the idea here is to put on a, a solid base layer and then you're gonna go over it with another coat of green 
to make sure that it has this properly green and um, well magic isn't it yeah basically what we do now is going over the second time making sure that it's the proper green deep solid green because most, most of these paints but you get them fluid enough they don't exactly cover perfectly anymore and if you're using paints that are less pigmented than these you definitely need to, to get two and perhaps even three coats of paint don't be afraid of that it's okay also be aware that paints dry differently some paints stay mostly the same like black and white most of the time this green on the other hand didn't really do that it changes colors as it's dry to a more muted green now of course we could just call the quits here just put the details on and get it going but also sorry for the massively zoomed in but it was hard to see what it was doing so we're gonna be massively zoomed in at this point what we're gonna do now is go over all the brown details and pick out uh, the surfaces to make sure that we have a nice highlight and we're doing this with a mix of uh, dirt spatter and a um, palish color called banshee brown it's not really brown at all it's more like a like nougat at best but basically the idea here is to get a nice solid differentiation between the highs and the lows now I could have gone two steps on this, mixed a much closer brown and then gone over with a with this color, but I decided to just do one because well I felt like it. Uh, you do you, I do me. Now this was one of these colors that mutes a lot when it dries. It gets much uh, more yellowish actually in a way. Um, so it, well, it looks very sharp now. Uh, the end result is a lot less sharp. It mutes out much, much more. Very nice, actually. Now, again, this one is staged. You can do go, let's say, two stages, even three stages. You could make sure that you do a very soft blend on this. Especially if you're going to try and make a showpiece model out of it. Then I would recommend going two or maybe three. So nice four step stages of applying colors like this because it looks very nice this tabletop model gonna be played with not gonna invest all that much time into it but as you can see we now get the nice difference between the brown and this highland color I mean that is kind of nice it's one of these things you do and this works for any every kind of camo you just put on a solid dark base color and then hit it with a lighter color to bring out the highlights of it. And now if that is a, for example, a tank with a lot of flat surfaces, you can get creative. But the make has a lot of angles onto it. So yeah, if you need at least one layer of this. As you can see on the leg now, it's starting to mute out a bit and come together and so the idea is basically just to hit all the raised areas make sure that they are nice and crispy I do actually choose to stay away from panel lining on this one because I felt we had enough differences in it as it was I'm though considering hitting it with a, a uh, gloss non oil later on because it looks nice I don't do that though in the video I'm still c considering it because once you do that it's done you can't go back on it so it's like I don't know but yeah basically I keep this paint blended by just having two blobs of paint on a wet palette and then draw a line between them and they will, they will flow together fairly well if you have the right Consistency. It's also a good way to know if you have right consistency. If they don't run together, probably need to add a bit of water to them. Just a dab, not a lot. Sorry, hit the camera. 
So yeah, now we're gonna be Crypt Wraith and Commando Green in mix. And again, we are using this to get a lighter tone, but a not a crazy light tone. Again, this one mutes out a bit when it dries, so it so cape it looks pretty sharp and very angry at this stage. Again, we do the same thing with this as we did with the browns. We go over all the panels and everything we think should be a highlight, we apply this color. Now, this does give it a slightly cartoony look to begin with, but I think it's mellowed out nicely. And if you then put a wash over this, it mellows out even more. That is the idea of the washes. But you don't have to, you don't want to. You can just leave it at this. What I try to do is avoid hitting the inner edges of the panel lines. Leave those slightly original color, just to give it this differentiation. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. So it pays to be a bit more careful there. And again, this is not an exact science. You just go over the model where you think it looks good, slap things down here and there. Sometimes, I mean, you can make a science out of it. Like hitting surfaces is a science, but this is also a, like 12 meters tall war machine. So, I mean, again, uh, how it like hits it and where it hits it, it's, it's, it's up for debate. It's up for debate. But yeah, pretty much just try to follow the lines, the panels, making things nice. And I say, the colors basically mixes themselves on the palette. That's the good part. And uh, yeah, keep it wet, keep it moist, keep it flowing easy. If you feel like getting stuck, add a bit more water and add two layers instead. I had as a go to try and just put down one layer this time. So that was what I aimed for. I used instead more paint. You know, you do you. But yeah, basically we're creating our own set of highlights. Now, there is a bit of paneling in this because you can say, then hit this with a wash and it will settle in through the, these parts and make it look really tasty. And if you're like me, using Army Painter paints, there is a really nice set of washes they have for this. That is very good at the whole paneling thing. But all their washes are matte. To some degree, apart from it's like a matte-ish, satiny, and sometimes you want a really poppy pop, so I don't use them on this one. But yeah, as you can see, it really lifts up the uh, raised areas. Well, with that, we pretty much start to round off. As a finishing details, we put the metal on the feet and on the vents and on the guns. You can use any metal you want. And I think this was chain mail in this case. No plate mail. At least Gunway Painter's version of chain mail. Is it even called chain mail anymore? I don't think it's called chain mail anymore. It was used to be called chain mail silver. So we apply that to the uh, vents and the um, feet. I always do this because I don't know. I don't, it's on painting the feet, it's always kind of counterproductive because those things can hit ground all the time, anytime, anyway. So, I mean, what's the point? And uh, this is not a period where you can add up your heavy black wash, an ink or a oil, just to take off this whole cartoony vibe. And we are going to do that later. We are not doing it in this video, but we are going to do that this last step. Because it's a nice step. And um, same with the weapons. Now, I don't really know what these events on the back of the legs are, but uh, they got a hit of silver too, just to bring them in line. 
As you can see, we painted the the uh, PPC and the auto cannon. I mean, there is tubes. So I mean, it is what it is. We are painting the missile rack, and uh, I think I'll wrap up by painting the cockpit with some contrast paints because I'm lazy. <laughs> At that point, I'm like, I'm lazy. I'm not gonna do this the proper way. I'm just gonna hit it with contrast paints and then let that be that. People tend to get very angry when I do that. I don't know why. Apparently, cockpits are very important. I know, I know it's important for the whole finishing touch of things. But at this point, I was like, no, let's just get this done. It's the quick and easy way. And there's nothing wrong in doing the quick and easy way. It is okay, you can do it that way. I used a bit too little a little bit too little contrast paint though, so it didn't flow out the way it should. So when I hit with the yellow it didn't, didn't do what it was supposed to do. So also less worth learning. As you can see, it still it stays pretty much as as it was. So we hit a bit more orange. That's the solution for everything. Hit a bit more orange. If it fails, more orange. And I mean, this one turned out half bad actually. I have seen worse. But yeah, with that, we turn to the beauty shots. Until next time, stay safe, be kind. And do, do play fair. Bye.